Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about three tips that I can give you when I learn a new programming language. So let's get into it. So basically the question here is how I can, you know, can I give you some tips on how to learn a new language for yourself? And I'll give you the three tips that I use myself. These are things that I do every single time I new, learn a new language. And hopefully it will feel fairly straightforward and maybe even a little bit obvious. Anywho, so tip number one, make sure that you start with the absolute bare bone basics and the lowest expectations that you can possibly have. Because one thing that have, I've seen happen quite a lot is that a beginner programmer is, well, a new programmer usually starts out with quite high expectations at times. You want to build really advanced things right off the bat and then you kind of get ahead of yourself and you don't really learn the fundamentals correctly. And the fundamentals are, this, are actually extremely important. Without those, so without a really good understanding of the syntax of a language, how it's supposed to work and all of this good stuff, you're just going to spend quite a lot of time looking things up or being confused and frustrated because you can't even get like basic functionality to work within your code. So by starting at the absolute lowest levels, just learning the syntax. I mean, this is how I do it as well, guys. I have sites, uh, I use exorcism and things of this nature to just do practice stuff, like basically doing simple algorithm, uh, algorithmic, pro algorithmic problems to just learn the syntax of something until such a time where I kind of feel like I know the construct. I mean, this is go, it's faster every time you learn a new language because most of them are fairly similar to each other. So you can progress faster and faster, but it always starts out that way. And it was the way I learned things in school as well. So second tip I can give you is that once you have gotten a good, fairly, you know, you got, you've gotten comfortable with just the basics. Well, then the next thing would be to, of course, advance that. And usually a good rule of thumb that I use is that the first real thing I try to build is one of those basic standard things that everybody does, right? Everything or one of the things that is very common in IT. And for most of us, that's going to be a REST API of some sort, a web application of some sort. So after I've actually learned the basics, the next thing comes to basically figuring out, okay, what package manager or dependency system can I use with this language? Which one is the recommended one? what web frameworks are out there, what database clients are out there, so because I need that, and what options do I have when it comes to validation, these sorts of things, authentication strategies and things like that. Because this is like the bare bone basics that I and most of the programmers who work professionally do every single day when we do back end work. And you I mean, it could, of course, you could do this in front end as well. And of course, you, if you're going into JavaScript, it's a little bit different. But just for, for the, just take that with you that the next thing after the basics is to build the boring, obvious thing every single time. And that's actually how I measure myself when I feel comfortable in the language or not. Because if I can produce the same thing that I produce at work or whenever I build the work in something that I feel more comfortable with, then I know that I'm on the right track, right? And then lastly, I highly recommend you to basically start making, to start making that language that you're right now learning, that new thing, to make that your default language. Because, you know, practice makes perfect. And just as learning how to speak a language, if you just learn how to speak the language and then you don't practice it or you don't immerse yourself in a in an environment where people speak that language, it's very costly for you to keep that up because it's kind of, in my experience, usually knowledge, especially fresh knowledge, works in a slightly different way than what you expect. As a lot of people seem to believe, have this idea that you just acquire the knowledge and then you just keep, and then you can just keep that on like on a shelf and mental shelf, if you will. But that's not how it works when you acquire new knowledge. It's very similar to how, like a meter which you pump up to a certain height. And the problem is that most people get to a point where they, they have a fairly good understanding of something or they are like, they feel settled in into that knowledge and then they just ignore it and then it starts dropping. The thing that you're working for towards is to pump that knowledge and keeping it at a high level 
for a long enough period of time for it to get, as I call it, ingrained into, embedded into your, into your spine. It's, uh, it's a similar, uh, the best analogy I suppose I can give you here is it's a similar, uh, it's a similar thing to learning how to fight, like martial arts or things of this nature. My old trainer used to say that the, if you need to think about what it is that you are doing when you're fighting, you're not, you don't actually know this well enough. You need to know the thing that, you're know, that you know so well that your brain just doesn't, you don't have to consciously think about throwing a punch or throwing a ki or kicking or something like that. It just happens when your, your instincts take over. And the same thing is true here. It, there's no way for you to be equally good at every single language because you need to use one of them for solving different problems. But you can keep things fairly relevant by just committing yourself to saying that, all right, I'm going to learn this language now. I know I have a few other languages here that I prefer or like that or make more sense for the things that I'm making. Of, of course, assuming, of course, that you're not doing this as a job because that's the perfect thing. If you if you can find a new job do, working with the language that you're learning, that's perfect. But if you can, just at least for your personal projects, always commit to using that language and just keep on learning using that language until it kind of feels boring because then you know that it's actually been embedded inside into your spine and you don't really, you're go it's going to stick around. It's like riding a bicycle. You need to learn it well enough and do it for long enough so that when you stop doing it every single day, it is the, the knowledge, at least like the core of the knowledge stays with you for life. So what I want you to take away from this is that, at least for me, when I learn a new language, the three tips that I can give you is that number one, start really, really simple, have really low expectations. In the beginning, you're going to most likely just struggle to get the syntax right and to get the most basic things correct. And that is expected. You will not be able to produce like a computer game or something advanced from day one. Just so keep the expectations correct here. Second thing is, Start by learning how to build the basic, boring, obvious stuff that most of the industry is building every single day for work purposes. And that is usually a REST API. So go out after you've learned, you feel comfortable in the basics, learn how, what package manager and web frameworks, authentication and database clients, all of these standard things that everybody uses within a professional environment and start practicing those until you can build applications or like REST APIs, something of that nature. And then lastly, make sure that you commit to that language for a fairly long period of time, because if you don't, it's very likely that you will try it out for a few weeks or a few months or something like that, and then you will get bored with it and you will just forget about it. But what you need in order for that language to really stick with you is for you to use it for long enough so that you pump your knowledge up and hold it at a certain level for a time, for some duration of time so that it gets embedded into your spine. And so you don't really have to go and relearn it if you stop using it for a few months. Have a great day.